You're on. Oh. <laughs> okay, you know, I had to go show him how it's done, y'all. We're on now, we're not sideways. I'm an old man. You're so not old. You act old, but you're not old. I feel old. You feel old. Okay, guys, so I, uh, we were live over on Dixie Bell, and uh, I decided we would just keep going because we're out here. Matt was so kind to do the live with me tonight. He even helped me set up. It was awesome. So I decided I would get this one of these bases painted. There's two of these. I have two bases. I guess I should paint this part too, then. I should paint this. Um, yeah, somebody might be under the table. Someone may drop a fork. <laughs> You'd be like, ooh, they didn't paint that. The table must be painted. Uh, so anyway, I'm painting this for a client that's here in town. And uh, we I stained. I'm not a big stainer, you know. It's not my thing. I don't know why staining would, it, it scares me. I'm going to be honest. It scares me. But Matt's done it a lot, and he kind of helped me through it. I'm going to lower the pedestal a little bit, so it might be shaky for a second. Pedestal? Or I mean the tripod and the pedestal. I'm doing the pedestal. So, we are, uh, I just stained three, we sanded this down. This was golden oak, like that chair. And we sanded it down and made it look like this. This is raw, raw wood. And then I put a conditioner on it, and then I used the no paint gel stain and made it so that they look like this. They look so good. Um, and my client, Linda, said she thought she, she would try to find, I don't think she's a big Facebook person, but she was going to try to find us on Facebook because she really wanted to watch. And uh, I hope she did, and I hope she's happy so far. And she wanted the pedestal painted, and I'm going to um, do this also with, I'm going to use a no paint gel stain on top of it and get some brown into these grooves around the base. So what I decided to do was use both Dixie Bell chalk paint and silk. So why the conditioner? Oh, because when we, um, first of all, to use no paint gel stain, it goes right over a factory. Speak up a little bit, Claudia, it, it, I can't hear you. Oh, Claudia, it goes, no paint gel stain goes right over a factory finish. Um, you don't have to sand down. But the top of the table had some water stain and some wear on it. And I felt like if we put the gel stain right on the factory finish that had some wear, that it was going to be splotchy. And I was going to get like super dark spots in areas. So I, Matt and I decided, you know what, let's just sand it off. It was quick and easy. We sanded it off um, and it was left like this. The problem when you sand things completely down to raw wood, if you want to, you know, a dining table is kind of kind of dressy, kind of fancy. Um, if you stain right over this, you can tend to, the wood, depending on the age, what it's been exposed to, what type of wood it is, you can end up with splotchiness with your stain. Um, so it helps to use a conditioner. And what the way, what I equate that to is like using a primer under your face makeup. I use a primer. Does anyone use a primer? It's like a, it's just like a clear, very smooth sort of silicone oily finish that, that's on my fingers. It dries fast and then I put my makeup on on top of it. Not very much because I don't wear much makeup. But um, so that's why I feel like it just goes in and sort of seals the raw wood the, itself and gets it, just gets it ready to accept the stain smoothly and evenly. So Libby. that's what I did. What say? Libby says, sorry for all the questions. I'm going to work with the same products. Yeah, good. Good, good, good. I'm glad. No. Uh, internet cut off for a second there. Must oh. be the weather. Oh, are we good? We got people back? Stephanie says, I have a question. I've been watching for uh, for a minute and love what you do. Thank you. Hmm. What? What's the question? I don't see it yet. Okay. <laughs> it's huh. coming. Stephanie's question's coming. Oh, do you have a special direction with brush stroke or sanding between coats? Um, what, what are you doing, Stephanie? Like, what type of furniture? What are you talking about? On this? Are you talking about on raw wood? Are you talking about on a furniture piece? To give me a little more uh, information. If it's wood, I, and I try to always go with the uh, direction of the grain, 
Uh, if it's a furniture piece, like a drawer, I try to always go left to right. If it's the top of a piece, I go left to right. It just depends on what, what the piece is that you've got. Karen wants to know what color you're using. Right now, I'm putting drop cloth on. Babe, will you help me turn this without, can you get that chair? What kind of conditioner did you use? I used Verathane conditioner, Verathane uh, pre, it's called a pre-stain conditioner. It's, uh, what did I send you to get, honey? Valspar, right? Minwax. Oh, Minwax. Home, Home Depot does not carry Minwax. I need you to spin this. Oh, spin this? I thought you said move the chair. I did, and spin it. The other way, nope, this way. Right there. Oh. Okay, what are you doing? Right here. Oh, oh my lord. Thank you, honey. Yep. Oh, babe. It's only got three legs. Yeah. <laughs> it's got three legs. Um, okay, so I used. Where did I use? Oh, Verathane. Verathane. I sent him for men wax, uh, but, th but they only had Verathane. It worked like a charm. It worked great. But. Dixie Bell just told us that you can use um, Big Mama's Butter for the wood conditioner. I didn't know that. I haven't tried it. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I use Big Mama's Butter all the time, but not as a pre-stained conditioner. So, I don't know about that. So but I will try it. Brenda, first time Gator Hide and have rough drawer fronts with a couple spots of paint missing. To fix, can I sand, paint spots, and seal again? Okay. Read that again. First time gator hide and have rough drawer front fronts with a couple of spots of paint missing. To fix, can I sand, paint spots, and seal it again? Um, I don't know what you're saying when you started it by saying first time gator hide, but if you've got a couple of drawer fronts that are rough and they've got some paint chips missing, you're asking can you sand and paint over that again? Um, it depends, like if it's, I would just paint the whole drawer again. Is that what you're asking? That's what I would do. But before I would paint the whole drawer again, what I like to do, if there's small chips, a small area of paint that's just missing, I like to take my finger. First, I get a real fine grit sandpaper and I sand it back as much as I can in that little tiny area, a little bitty area. And then I put a little bit of paint on my finger and I just fill that little chipped area to try to get it the same depth as if it had another coat on it. I let that dry and then use that real fine grit again to sand just to make it flat and then I do one big coat over the whole space again. Does that make sense? Try to get that level the same. Would you do the same thing with wood glue? Would I do it with wood glue? What do you mean? Trying to get a little glue underneath that little flap of paint. Oh no, you don't need glue. Glue under the paint? I was just asking for my own that benefit. Is a, that is a silly question, Matt Bellion. There are no silly questions. <laughs> First, you need to put a coat of glue down before you <laughs> paint down. I'm talking about flaking paint. Uh, 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 the edge. No, we don't need that. So, does anyone want to know what I'm doing? So, I'm putting drop cloth down. I'm painting, uh, not a real drop cloth. This color of paint is called drop cloth, and it is the chalk mineral paint. My Dixie Bell chalk mineral paint is amazing. Um, not because I work for them, or with them, I don't work for them, I work with them. Not because I work with them, but because it's amazing, or I wouldn't use it. I wouldn't use it on all of my products, all of my uh, client crate pieces, all of my personal pieces, I wouldn't use it. It works like a charm, it adheres to everything, um, but it is a chalk mineral paint with a very flat, raw finish. So they now have come out with Sutton, which is a brand new paint line that they've got. It is not a chalk mineral paint, and it does not require a top coat. If you don't want a matte finish, but you want a silk finish, it's called silk. If you want a silky finish with a light sheen to it, which is what I would like for this piece, um, that is what you can use. So what I've decided to do is I'm putting down drop cloth, chalk paint first, um, as sort of like my primer, but it's also, it's blocking my color, it's giving me a great base. And then I have this almost the identical color in the silk line called Endless Shores that has a really beautiful sheen that it dries to. And that's gonna be my second coat. And then I'll be done, I'm done. And I did it on Dixie Bell Live and it looks beautiful. So I decided I'd come on over here 
and finish out the base. This is only one of the bases to the table. Okay, babe. Can you help me? If I try to spin it, it wants to fall. Because it's on the there's a There's a thing you can put over here. Thank you. All right. So we are, you can already see, guys, the look of this paint with that, with this stain. Doesn't that look awesome? It looks so good. It's going to completely change the look of this table. Of course it is. Of course it is. So who saw the white hutch? Matt has walked away. I have no idea what you're saying. Y'all know that when Matt moderates, he doesn't stay put. I know that the other husbands that y'all watch do stay put, but my husband does not. You make me get paint on my hands. I had to go away. wash my hands. Go to the bathroom or get some water. Mm -hmm. So, so can you explain that this has two parts? The tabletop is going to be stained and the base is going to be painted. So that's why you were talking about wood conditioners while you're painting. Yes, you just answered for me, didn't you? Yes. Look at you go. Look at you. Karen wants you to fix those fingerprint marks that I put on there. Oh, yeah, where are they? They're right in the front. Right in the front. I will, Karen, thank you. Let me get over there. <laughs> You're here? I was leaving my mark. Did I get it? Um, most of it. <laughs> no, you gotta get the bottom part. <laughs> Yeah, so the table, I'm painting the base and staining the top of the table, the tabletop stained. Except we are doing, what is it called, an apron? The apron around the edge of the table is carved. It's really pretty. <clears throat> and that's gonna be painted as well, and then it's gonna be waxed. All right, so this, this one is coated, and I'm gonna go ahead and start laying down the silk, which is called Endless Shores, and let that set aside and be drying, and then we'll call it a night for tonight. And then tomorrow, I will come back out here and paint the other one, because there's two bases, and paint the other base, and then I will go live and do some uh, waxing for you guys over the silk so you can see how that works. Okay, babe, will you spin it for me? favor <laughs> which direction do you want um Facing. towards that way just a, like one rotation just quarter turn yeah like that y'all please notice matt's new blue tennis shoes <laughs> <laughs> my old man shoes matt really struggles when it comes to buying tennis shoes he 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 just struggles with it so bad so we got a picture he always wants to say he has an opinion, and then we tell him what we think looks best, and then he comes home with something else. Well, all they tell buyer's remorse. You had to return a pair, didn't you? Well, you used to tell me I was stuck in the 80s, so I tried to buy stuff that's a little more modern and up-to-date, and then now you make me feel like a teenager. Well, he bought <laughs> some that had, like, yellow reflectors all over them, like he's a runner or something. I'm like, dude, you, you, know, you aren't running. They were hip. They were dope. They were hip. They were... I don't even know the word kids are using for that anymore. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit this with a dryer for a minute. Y'all can talk to Matt, and then I'm gonna start putting some silk down, even though I've got a little silk on here in one spot, what side I did already, but I'm gonna go ahead and put silk on. You doing a second coat on that? This you, is one coat? You missed the toe. Huh? You didn't paint the toe. Um, yeah, I'm doing a second coat, but I'm using a different product. So I did one coat and drop the chalk mineral paint, drop cloth, and then I do my second coat. Whoa, the lid's off. And endless shore. It's almost identical in color. It's a, endless shore is a little a little brighter than drop cloth. Thank you, babe. Mm -hmm. uh, but it won't require a top coat, which I really like the idea of, and it accepts the wax really well without needing a top coat. So that's my goal. That's my that's my driver. That's why I've decided that that was my decision maker for me. You don't need to put gator hide over the top? On this? I'm not going to. I'm gonna put gator hide over the top of these. She was that's probably what she was asking. Yeah. 
I'll be putting gator hide over the top of my stain. Do you have to wait 72 hours? So after my stain is dry, we'll wait three days. And um, after three days, then I can gator hide my tops. Paul Lynn says, so I missed why, uh, why are you doing the chalk under the silk? Um, kind of like a primer, I'm doing it as my primer. I knew that if I, this is what I know. I knew that if I use straight up silk, that I would need two coats anyway. The chalk paint has a little, it's a little, has more body to it. The silk paint, the coverage is great, but not as good as the chalk paint. You just have to find what you like better. Use them both. They have both have strengths. Um, they both have you know shining moments. Uh, so I use drop cloth because I got better block, and now I can just use silk on top of it for the pretty finish. Does that make sense? That's what I'm doing. I'm not even changing brushes. I'm using the same brush. All right. So just coming in here with my silk and somewhere. Does silk have a primer in it? It has a built-in primer and it also has a built-in top coat. Um, they, the, they are saying though, because people were struggling with the primer aspect, people were just putting it on, on everything. Um, it does have a stain blocking primer and it also has an adhesion primer, but just to sort of satisfy everyone and what the general market is doing, even though we had tested and tested and tested it before it got put onto the market, um, we do recommend scuffing your surface first. So if I had gone straight silk onto this wood, I would have really, per Dixie Bell's instructions, needed to scuff my wood. Well, I don't need to scuff my wood when I use Dixie Bell chalk paint. Uh so. The Furniture Duchess wants to know if you would use that strategy on cabinets. One coat of chalk paint, then cover with silk. Probably me. That's me. That's me. Don't have to. There's other things you could do. You could use a coat of boss if you wanted to. You could scuff your cabinets and just go straight silk. So what do you prefer? What makes you feel better about it? You know, the, all of those would work. Boss and then silk. Chalk mineral paint and then silk or scuffing and then silk. It's totally, really, it's your call. Now also if it's a super slick surface like glass or metal or formica and you wanna use silk on it, you can, but you are gonna to have to use slick stick just like you would have to use slick stick before you used your chalk mineral paint. So Libby says, can I use the fluff? Whoops, the question disappeared. Can I use the fluff under the salt water or better to use the boss? You can use the fluff under the salt water. Did I must have missed something. What do you have? You know, what, what do you have with you? Because either one of those would work. What was your question there? Uh, no question. Oh, the, uh, what kind the of difference in that, whoever asked that last question, I do need to, there's a caveat to that. If you have, okay, so I think she's the one who asked on Dixie Bell's page. Yes. If you were using fluff and you're going to top coat it, If, you, if you're going to end up putting a top coat on, you better use boss. That's my opinion. Just in case you have bleed through. If you're going over something that might bleed. Thank you, Paul Lynn. What'd she say? Uh, that I'm doing a great job. You are doing a good job, babe. It's not Paul Lynn. It's just Lynn. Oh. Unless it's Paul watching, or maybe Paul and Lynn are both watching. I don't know. I'm just reading the name. <laughs> what kind of artistic design do you have in store for this table? Will you spin this for me, babe? Yes. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me do the bottom. And Libby wants to know, so if I don't want to scuff, I can just use the chalk paint, right? Are you using a top coat? That's the main question. Are you going to use a top coat? Do I have to scuff before the boss? No, you do not have to scuff before the boss. All right, what do you want? Spin it just like a quarter. Do you see that what I'm saying, guys? There, you can ask me, you can come at me from any angle, but I can't give you a hard, poor answer. That's the that's the part. That's the frustrating part as a teacher or as someone who is experienced with all of the products, like myself. Um, there's so many ways to get there. You you have to decide. You have to. What product do you have that you're using? Um, 
what is your end, what is your end result? What are you working on? Um, what are you comfortable with? All of those, all of those variables come into play. They, they all do. And you can watch one artist and then another artist and then another artist. And they're probably not going to say, oh, well, this is the right way. They're going to say, this is how I choose to do it. At least I know there's nine brand ambassadors. And we're very supportive over each other. We're all very educated in the products. And we all have our own strengths. And every one of us likes to do something a different way. I know for a fact that Leah and I, Leah of Leah Noel Designs, her and I both like to use the chalk paint under the silk. But then you've got, um, I'm pretty sure, like Brandy and Cristano, they don't, they, I don't think that they do use that under the silk. So they just will do uh, like a scalping paint. So everybody's different. We all have our, our reasonings or what we like to do. Another question, Mr. Squinty Eye over there. It is Lynn, not Paul. Paul is out working. And Paul's working. Oh, someone asked what is our design for this tabletop. Uh, it's going to be kind of like a restoration hardware. I put a post on my page today, kind of what it'll look like. It'll be the dark stained wood top and then the light apron underneath. There are chairs right over there, and the chairs are going to have a dark stained seat with painted legs and painted back. You can see a little bit here, like this is the endless shore and that's the drop cloth. You can see the difference between the two. They're pretty similar. Lynn says buttercream here today instead of, uh, rather than chalk paint. She has a cake cooling. Oh, I was like, what? Did my, did my uh, China Hutch picture make you want to make a buttercream frosting cake, Lynn, yesterday? Seeing that cake on the China Hutch. That sounds really good. Jeanette says, silk has a satin silky finish. If you want extra durability for a high use area, oops, disappeared, uh, or surface, you can do additional top coats. You can, and Gator Hide is the best for high traffic areas for sure. And Gator Hide works over silk, um, it does. Yeah, you can top coat it if you want. It's just not, it's just got a built in top coat. So thank you for that. Who, whoever said that, I forgot who you said that was. Tammy. Tammy, thank you, hon. It is really pretty, though. This is my first time to do, um... no, it's not. I used it on a desk. I haven't used it in a while. I do like it. It's very easy to use. Very user friendly. It's 9.15. Do I mean? 9.15. It is? It's 8.15. Oh, it's 8.15. Oh my gosh, we have a heart attack. <laughs> All I want to do, babe, is finish this and then we can go. Okay, will you spin it for me? Yep. I'm going to have to turn it over anyway because I'm a. Uh, I just want to get this one final coat on here. So, Claudia says with all the different products now, it's getting more confusing. Who said I agree. That? Claudia Powell. Claudia. You know, Claudia, it, yes, I can see why you would say that. To me, it's exciting because it means I have options. Um, but I'm also knowledgeable in the, in the product. So, um, that's just ask, just ask someone, you know, just ask, uh, and get someone to try it. They all, the beauty is they all work really well together. You really can't go wrong. Honestly, you can't, um, just gotta try it. Something smells like bubble gum. What is that? I don't know. Did you just hear a car door? Yes. I think Zadie might be home. What else do I have going on? I'm gonna do the so I'm gonna do the chairs next week. Uh, I'll stay live for you guys. 
uh, when I'm waxing. Um, I think after that, I have that rocking horse that I'm going to be working on. Uh, that's for a, a friend, a client of mine as well. And Matt and I, when are we going to start the garage, babe? We have this garage to do. Um, I don't know. The floor? Weekend after next? I think we have a volleyball tournament that weekend. Do we have one this weekend? No, but I have a Posh and Fancy project this weekend. Okay, Who's in my Posh so and Fancy? Anybody on the Posh and Fancy? Volleyball one? next weekend and then the garage after that. My membership group with Solly Joe. We have our project on Saturday. Um, starting at the beginning of year, beginner of the year, off, beginning of the year off right, talking about prep and priming basics. Um, all right, so he left. Let's see if I can do this by myself. Oh my gosh. Huh? Okay, can you come turn this? I'm almost done. Killing me. I'm sorry. You want the flat side now? Yeah, don't put your fingers on there. No, just I'm spin it. Pick it a up. quarter. Just a quarter. Yeah. Right there. Her. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I didn't tell anybody. Well, I'll tell people this. So Posh and Fancy opens, we're opening for new members on Sunday, this coming Sunday, um, for that for that membership group, which is such a sweet little group. I love it so much. So yeah, we have a year full of furniture projects, and we have uh, Matt and Matt and Thea joining us for some of those planned, which will be a lot of fun, because they're a lot of fun. We're gonna do uh, resin countertops. Um, we are? Yeah, at the end of the year, we sure are. I think that's in either November or December. Yep, yeah, we're gonna do a countertop pour, and I can't see it in here. We're gonna have some running contests. Lots of furniture finishes. Oh man, I'm getting my floor, I'm getting paint on my floor. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Don't be a smarty. All right. Oh, I, I thought you meant the other floor. I think I'm done, except I will, once this is dry, guys, I will flip this over tomorrow and get uh, the underneath side of the pedestal and the underneath side of the legs and any spots that I missed. But otherwise, I think it looks pretty good. What a difference, right? Will you bring the other one over? Will you grab the other one? A good idea. Let's do that. Okay, real quick. I'm gonna do a before and after. That'll be a good, that'll be a good picture to take too to share online. Don't hurt yourself. Looky there. Looky there. Big dip, right? Yep. Big, big, big difference. I love it. And then look at it with this. You're not distressing it, are you? No. Look at that. Look at that and that. I like it a lot. Okay, guys. Um, thank y'all for hopping over here and joining me. Here, I am hungry. We're gonna go eat some dinner. Um, washed mm. out our one paintbrush that I used tonight. Michelle wants to know what group you'll be doing the resin tops in. Uh, Posh and Fancy. In Posh and Fancy. Okay. It's a secret. It's a public secret that I just said out loud. <laughs> that Matt didn't even know about. But, nope, you know, I didn't. He's, he's always willing. He's always Do you know willing. what day it's on? When we're doing that? Oh, no, I don't know. The day. But when the group opens, we're opening the group, the doors this Sunday. So, um, for membership. Okay, guys, I love you all. Thank you so much. I will see y'all over the next few days live. Okay? Bye. See you. Bye.